Hey everyone, can you guess where the chocolate is coming from this week based on what I'm wearing? My, one of my favorite Aloha shirts. This week I'm going to be talking about a chocolate from Hawaii, specifically the island of Maui. And that is Maui Kuya Estate Chocolate. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the founder and I'm going to tell you a little bit about maybe just a tiny bit of Hawaiian history kind of stuff and then we'll taste some bars. I have a few bars from them. I have their 70% um, Hawaiian, 100%, 70% all Maui chocolate and their 70% I mean, 40, what am I talking about? 60% <laughs> milk chocolate cacao. And then I have some of their flavored ones that they make with um, Costa Esmeralda's beans. So this one is blood orange. Then I have mango. Yum, I love mango. Lemongrass, that's a fun inclusion that you don't see very often. And peppermint. So, all right, let's tell you about the founder. So the time with Maui chocolate is a little bit different than most timelines because Maui chocolate is a little bit of a different company. So it was founded by Gunners Valkars, Valkar, Valkyrs, Gunners Valkyrs in um, Lahaina, Maui, Hawaii in the United States. So the first time they produced and processed chocolate grown in Maui was in April 2020. So you all know what you were doing in April 2020. That was the first time that they processed grown in Maui chocolate and sold it. Um, but there was a lot going on beforehand before they got to that point. So Gunners Valkyrs is a, was a biotech engineer. He is a PhD from UC San Diego, um, which is where he was born and raised. He was a co-founder of um, a few companies. The last one I know of is Biosight, which he sold to Eli Lilly, to Lilly, the big pharmaceutical company. Um, so no shortage of resources there. Uh, he had, he was um, instrumental in developing uh, patented, patented, uh, why can't I speak today? Patented antibody technology, um, biomarkers, novel biomarkers important in critical disease research. Um, his first company he worked on, I think it was pre pregnancy tests actually, and he is really interested in biophysics. So that's his background. No chocolate, no culinary background at all. Um, he does have a farming background though. So his father was a farmer pre-World War II in Europe and due to the war he was displaced and they eventually made their way to San Diego and he always had an orchard. So um, Gunners grew up with growing fruit in his backyard in, in orchards. So he knew about that process and how fruits grow and what needs to be done to have to maintain an orchard. Um, they got to San Diego, his dad always had a citrus orchard, but um, if you've ever been to Hawaii, you know that plants that grow in Hawaii are very different than plants that grow on the mainland. So things that grow on the mainland, like citrus and peaches and cherries and things that we would grow in orchards in California or places that have orchards are different than what you grow in Hawaii. And so while he had this land that he wanted to produce an orchard on in Maui, it was going to have to be something different and he decided that it was going to be cacao and so he actually partnered up with UH Manoa um, to plant cacao in a part of Maui called Kapalua uh, as part of a UH Manoa field trial to see if cacao could be a viable crop in Hawaii. Um, he was actually working with an interesting graduate student at the time, Dan O'Doherty, who now everybody in chocolate knows who Dan O'Doherty is and he is now the VP of the Maui. He's the VP Farm and Factory Operations of the Maui Chocolate Company. But at the time when they started this field try, 
Dan was in charge of the field trial and he was a graduate student and he was working with him. So they planted um, in an area of Maui, uh, Ahu, Pua'a, uh, Kuia. <laughs> now I'm all convinced I'm pronouncing everything wrong. That's correct, Kuia. Um, it's a piece of land owned by Kamehameha Schools. So let me, I threw a bunch of Hawaiian words at you there. So let's just backtrack and I'll tell you a little bit about that. So Kamehameha Schools, Kamehameha Trust was started by Princess Bernice uh, Pau Ahi um, Bishop. If you've ever been to the islands, you know about Bishop's Museum and stuff like that. That's kind of the basis of this. Um, it was, uh, she founded a school system specifically for native Hawaiian children and they own, they did own, they still own a lot of land on the islands and they lease that land out and make a profit from it to keep the schools running and to support uh, the Kamehameha Trust. Um, so that is who owns the land that Maui Kuia Estate Chocolate leases from. Now I said that the ku Kuia is a Ahu Pua'a, which is a traditional division of land in Hawaii. So um, ancient Hawaiians, Native Hawaiians, didn't have, didn't really have a concept of privately owned land. All the land belonged to the king, who held it in trust for the entire population. The land was then divided into into smaller divisions and controlled by different chiefs and ali'i that were assigned. Um, so you have the big division, the Moku Puni, which is a whole island, so like Oahu or the Big Island or Maui. And then you have the next smaller division is a Moku. And in this case of the, ku, um, the Kuia estate there, Moku would be Lahaina. So this is in Lahaina. And the Ahu Pua'a is a wedge-shaped piece of land that runs from mountain to sea. So basically it was a self-sustaining piece of land that a group of people could entirely live off of because at the top you had access to large trees um, like the koa for building and the kukui for the kukui nuts and the oil and all of that and access to fresh water that came from the rains out of the mountain and then as you would come down you would have land for agriculture growing um, taro or callow uh, growing coconut groves place to live and then as you ran down to the sea, you would have attractive sea where you could have a fishing village and access to the resources of the ocean. And so it was really, it was really a place where you could get everything that you needed as a group of people. And they were, the size was depending on the resources themselves. So if you were resource short, they would tend to be bigger in size. If it was resource rich, it would tend to be smaller. So Ahu Pua'a, is something that you can still see marked on the islands. You'll see, as you drive around the islands, you'll see um, brown historical markers that say this is the Ahu Pua'a of whatever. And towns are often named after the Ahu Pua'a. In this case, for Maui chocolate, the Ahu Pua'a is the Kuia um, Ahu Pua'a. And Kuia in Hawaii means um, spear, short pointed spear or spearhead. And so that is where that word comes from. Now, the nice thing about this Kauia is that when they first started working with Dan and trialing the um, growing of cacao to see if it would be viable crop in Hawaii, what happened was they planted it and it got whipped around by the trade winds on Hawaii. So the trade winds were just brutal to the trees and basically killed almost all of them. So they had to find an area that was protected from the trees and they did, they found this area on this uh, Kuia estate and um, it has ridges that protect it from the trade winds. It doesn't make it completely impervious to winds. There was a hurricane in 2018 that um, did quite a bit of damage to the trees and 
um, dug into their 2019 crop, but still it's, it's much more protected than it was um, in the different area that they first planted. So this started in 2013. So 2013, they planted hybrid trees um, from Dan. They planted windbreak and shade trees. By 2016, they had planted 10 acres. By 2018, they had planted another 10 acres. So they're going, they have 20 acres. They wanna work up to 60 acres eventually. And I'll talk about the reason why for that a little bit later. So by 2016, they realized that there are some realities to farming in Hawaii. And the reality is that it is very expensive. Hawaii is a lovely place to visit as a tourist to come and go, but to live there, it's very, very expensive. Um, if you've ever been to a grocery store, you know that a gallon of milk can cost you upward of $8 in Hawaii, where in the mainland it can cost uh, uh, most of the time costs less than two. So it's very expensive to farm and do everything in Hawaii. So they realized that in order to, uh, they realized that first cacao as a commodity crop, a raw agricultural commodity is not really viable in Hawaii. Is the just, the expense is just too much. So what they needed to do was they needed to increase the production of a finished product, chocolate, um, in order to bring the production costs down. So they'll need to plant more acres. They're going for 60 acres and they need to produce more chocolate. And when they calculated, when they made their first test bar out of Maui chocolate, they calculated the cost of that first test bar and it was something ridiculous like 400,000 US dollars. <laughs> so you have to make more chocolate to bring the production costs down. So the um, ahu pua'a that they were growing on, the Kuia estate, has been growing, had been growing sugarcane for like a ridiculous amount of time, over 100 years, almost 150 years, I think. And so when they grow sugarcane, they just, all trees gone, it's just grass. Sugarcane is just a big grass. And so this sugarcane area had been leased for sugarcane from Kamehameha schools for over 100 years. It had been cleared. And in 1999, the sugarcane production stopped. It just became too expensive as a raw, raw agricultural commodity. But the land had been cleared and it was just sitting fallow and growing grass. And so there were no real trees or windbreaks there. So they had, they, like I said, they started in 2013 planting everything, the cacao trees, the shade trees, the windbreaks, everything that they needed to have a functional farm. So up until, and even now, they are um, supplementing their Maui grown cacao with Costa Esmeraldas cacao out of Ecuador, which is also a project that Dan Doherty worked on, is still working on. And over time, as they plant more acreage, um, will increase the percentage of Maui cacao. So in order to be called a Maui chocolate or a product made in Maui, it has to be 100% grown, 100% made in Maui. So they have the two bars, the dark and the dark milk that are 100% from their Maui that were first produced in April of 2020. And so mine have an ex expiration date of early 21. So we're close to uh, being the first off the line. And then they also have the, like I said before, the Costas Esmeraldas chocolate that they're supplementing with that they add um, interesting essential oil flavors to. So I think that's all I wanna tell you about that for now. Let's flip the camera around and taste some chocolate. All right, so here's the bars that I have from the Kuia Estate Chocolate in Maui. I am going to for sure open the dark chocolate today, but I also am interested in opening the lemongrass. We'll see how it goes. So I told you about the word Kuia. We have a 70% cacao dark chocolate, 100% grown in Maui. If they were to mix Costas Esmeraldas in with this, they couldn't call it Maui chocolate. 
Uh, let's see what else we got here. So they give you some good information on the back. Uh, Kauia Estate in Maui, shade grown, agroforestry system. Agroforestry is good for the environment. Uh, Trinitario beans, upper Amazon mix, ancient Creole novel hybrids. Those are the hybrids developed by Dan. And then we've got some tasting notes there. But we won't cheat and read yet. So let's open this up and take a look. So this is a 25 gram bar. And if you go to their estate, you can actually take a tour and they also produce little tasting bars. So the, this is not a small batch production facility. This is a full on big factory. Um, they've got, he's got resources, like I said at the beginning. They have lots of industrial equipment. It is, um, the factory is 100% solar powered computer-controlled factory, computer technology. Um, they have industrial equipment. They use a pre-refiner. They use ball mills. They have a conching machine. They heat their molds. It's very automated. They have um, videos online that you can watch if you are interested. What else? Oh, they use, so they have two different productions lines. So I have a milk bar here. The milk is produced on an entirely different line than the dark chocolate to make sure that this is allergen free. So they keep them entirely independent of each other for the reasons to produce an allergen free bar. Um, what else? Oh, so the milk is not your usual spray dried milk powder. It's a roller dried milk. Um, roller drying means that the pressure of the rollers creates heat. Pressure and heat are basically the same thing. And so this creates heat and it gives some of the milk powder, uh, the sugars in the milk kind of get caramelized a little bit. So it gives it a different little, a little bit different flavor, a little bit of a caramel flavor versus spray dried milk. So that's the milk one. They also add, I didn't check on the back here. So they also add so they have cacao beans, sugar, they add cocoa butter to give it a really good mouthfeel. Cocoa butter will give you that nice, smooth, luxurious mouthfeel that you expect in a luxury chocolate. So this is a nice looking bar, fun molds, kind of got a little bit of a Polynesian theme going on there. Looks like it's in good temper. Let's listen for a snap. Good snap. For 70% looks nice so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just rub my thumb on it to melt the cocoa butter a little bit and warm it up and release the volatile aromas and we'll come back and taste the chocolate all right so when I smell this I get a little bit of a I get cocoa nice strong cocoa smell a little bit of a fruity tang when I taste it I get right away, I get the tang of mango, pineapple, tropical fruits in there. And then it's got this lovely, smooth, cooling mouthfeel that comes from the cocoa butter. Proceeds to give you a little bit of a nuttiness, then butter, and then you have this running undercurrent of a, caram a lightly sweet caramel note all through it. It's quite a nice bar quite nice um, yeah and lovely finish no astringency no bitterness at all they've done a really good job with this so yeah that was a nice bar but it would be interesting for me to taste that um, with the dark milk I'm excited to try that I was gonna open the lemongrass but I think I've talked enough for this one Watch for this one on my Instagram. Follow me on at Opening Chocolate on Instagram and watch for the Kauia Estate flavored bars on there. All right, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and finish up. All right, so that was the Maui 70% Kauia Estate chocolate. Um, I wanna tell you a little bit about this on the back here. This, I don't know if the camera's gonna focus on it. On the back of their bars, it says 100% net profit donated to charity. So um, although in 2016 this started as a hobby, it also started because 
um, gunners wanted to give back to the community. They all have a um, family foundation, the Makana, Makana, uh, Makana Aloha Foundation. <laughs> Sorry, blanked out for a second. The Makana Aloha Foundation. Makana means food. Um, so rather than add to that an endowment with this, they invested a Sydney from that in the chocolate company so that 100% net profit will be given to the nonprofit community in Maui itself to support things for like Habitat for Humanity, Hawaiian Humane Society, uh, Maui Whale Trust, Maui uh, Nui Botanical Gardens, Maui Food Bank, uh, things that uh, and other like youth theater there there's a whole list you go on their website and there's a whole list of nonprofit organizations that um, Maui Chocolate will support with their um, current and future profits so their goal is to be a hundred percent net profit donated to charity I don't think they're quite there yet I think the last year with COVID set them back a little bit but I'm pretty sure that they will get there eventually. So they do have, so if you ever happen to find yourself on the island of Maui, they do have tours. They have this cool little elevated tasting area where you can get little squares of chocolate and try um, different kinds of their chocolate. And it's fun and it's Maui, so it's beautiful and lovely and warm and <laughs> everything Maui, everything island. Uh, so that is it for today's chocolate. I hope that you like learning about this. If you have any questions for me, make sure to ask. Have any questions about Hawaii, living in Hawaii. I lived there for almost a decade. Um, any chocolate questions, anything you want to tell me, you've tasted a great chocolate, leave me a comment. I'll be sure to respond. And make sure you like and subscribe. And we will see you next week for another chocolate maker.